Peggy 18. Hi, my name is Ashraf Ismail, game director of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, and I'm very proud to be showing off the Caribbean open world. Here, we're gonna start with Edward after completing a few missions. He's met up with the assassins, but he's not yet bought into the creed, so he still has this selfish need for fame and fortune. Edward is one of the most unique characters we've created for the Assassin's Creed universe. He is a man who is still trying to figure out who he is in life and what he wants to get out of it. At this point in the story, he still wants that fame, so one way to get it is to complete these assassination contracts. This is a way to make money and to gain a bit of notoriety. So here we go, we have two targets to take out, two Templar brothers, so we're gonna accept the contract and uh, the world map is gonna show us where this contract takes place. So we see here that the contract is actually very close to us. It starts in the village we're in, but as we zoom out, we want to show you the world that we have. Many locations, over 50 locations, centered by Cuba, the Bahamas, and Florida up north. This is a massive world. There's a lot to find and do in this Caribbean Sea. But now we'll get back to the Fisherman Village and go after our targets. The Fisherman Village, it's one type of location in this world. It's really here as a convenience to the player. This is where you can start missions, where you can shop to upgrade Edward and uh, the Jackdaw itself. It's really about the mood and the ambiance of the Caribbean Sea. In the distance, we have uh, a tavern that we're approaching. Taverns are places where you can hire crew, play mini games, drink if you wish. But for now, we're gonna focus on the targets and take them out. <laughs> now that we've taken out one brother, the other one's gonna bolt. Just like classic ACs, we can chase him down and take him out that way, but there's many ways to complete this uh, contract. We can use the new free aim system to shoot him this way, to eliminate him that way. We can jump onto the ship and take him out with his crew, but instead we're gonna let him escape into the sea and follow him with the Jackdaw. This is your ship, this is the second main character of the game. You're gonna have to customize and upgrade the ship as you go on this journey with Edward. We've seamlessly gone from a ground chase right into a naval chase. We could destroy the ship and complete the contract that way, but instead using the spyglass, we can see that he's carrying a lot of rum. Rum is important in the economy system. It's one way of making a lot of money if you sell it properly. So instead of destroying the ship, we're gonna plunder that ship. Fire! Here you can see the upgrades that we've made into the naval combat. Using the front cannons, you can shoot chain shots to slow down the ship. Using the new round shot mechanic of trajectory aiming, you can aim for the hull and do a lot of damage this way. This specific enemy is what we call a frigate. Uh, frigates are the type of ships that you need to destroy as fast as you can because the longer the fight uh, lasts, the more damage they're capable of doing. We have other enemy types like the Charger or the Man of War. The Man of War is a massive ship capable of carrying over 100 cannons. These are ships that you really need to upgrade to be able to face. But now that this frigate has been demasted, we can start the boarding. Boarding, it's very important, you are a pirate. This is how you gain cargo, this is how you take on ships. So here we can start the boarding from any orientation or angle we wish. The distance even matters. If you get too close, the two crews will just jump right into each other. If you start a bit further, you can jump in the water and go in for a sneak stealth attack. We have two objectives to accomplish for this boarding. We can take out the captain, and we need to take out some of his crew. So using the swivel gun, we will efficiently take out a lot of the crew. And now we'll go for the captain using Edward's navigation abilities. Here again, using the new frame system, we have a dangerous enemy on the other side taking out our crew. We can easily take him out with a headshot. So what we see here is that two ships have come together to create this 3D environment where using your assassin abilities to navigate, to be stealthy, you can take the advantage and get the kill by surprise. Now that we've taken out the captain, we still need to take out a few of the crew members to complete this boarding. Now that we've plundered the ship, we're gonna gain that rum that we saw earlier, but we're also gonna gain an ammo and crew members and some gold. With every boarding, there's three options that you can do with that ship. You can gain crew members, you can send the ship to your fleet if you wish, 
or you can salvage a ship to repair the Jackdaw if you took too much damage in the fight. In this case, since we did well, we're gonna send the ship to our fleet. Now that we're back in the Caribbean Sea, we needed to make sure that every minute something is being advertised to the player, something new for the player to do. In this case, we have this uncharted location. These are what we call playas. We have over 75 of these in the Caribbean world. Every playa has something very important for the player to find, something that uh, will help in upgrading Edward or the Jackdaw. So it's in your advantage to explore these locations. Again, for us, seamlessness is very important. We needed to be able to explore this Caribbean world without having too much interruption in the action. So being able to just let go of the wheel anywhere we want, jump into the water, and swim over to that location. This is very important for the mood and the immersiveness of this Caribbean open world. Here, as we get on the playa, in the distance, we can see that there's a faction battle. But closer to us, we can see that there's this uh, poor drunken sailor who's passed away. But uh, being a pirate, of course, we're going to loot his body and see what he has for us. So we found a treasure map. This treasure map is asking us to go to an island called Mysteriosa. Every time you find one of these, you know that you're going to find a treasure that is linked to the progression of the Jackdaw or Edward. So they are very valuable. Here we're gonna take a look at that faction battle. We have a British ship facing off against a Spanish ship. We could jump in and take advantage of this opportunity, allowing each ship to weaken uh, the other and for us to plunder both. But now we're gonna make our way back to the Jackdaw. Again, this is the second main character of the game. There's a lot of customization and a lot of upgrading to do on the Jackdaw. You can upgrade all the weapons to fit the playstyle you wish. Now, as we get onto the Jackdaw, we can see that the crew is cheering for us. Edward has a really close relationship with his first mate, Ottawale, standing right there, and with his crew. And this is something that you'll see later in the demo, that we can lose and gain crew members. Again, using the spyglass, we can really see the contents of a ship, but you can also assess the danger and threat level of these ships. But for now, we're going to continue to Mysteriosa to find that treasure. Here we've crossed into a harpooning zone. The harpooning system is connected to the hunting system, which is used for upgrading Edward himself. So you can upgrade the number of weapons he carries, the ammo that you can carry, and even his health. But for now, we've moved past that zone and we've got into a storm. Storms are very dangerous. If you're not careful, if you don't know how to navigate a storm, you will take damage to your ship and you will lose crew members. In the distance, we can see a water spout. This is a tornado in the ocean. These are very dangerous. They can suck you in. And when they do, they tear the ship apart and uh, take out your crew. Here, we can see its effect on a ship. This poor ship got sucked in and got destroyed. Storms are very dangerous, but we wanted the player to take advantage of this. When you've mastered a storm, when you know how these systems work, you can pull enemies into a storm and let the storm do damage for you. So there is a strategic element to using a storm in the world. Here we can see that the storm is dying down a bit, but there's still this torrential downpour. It was very important for us to get the real mood of and atmosphere of the Caribbean in the weather cycles and in the daytime cycles. But here, since we've survived the storm, did pretty well, let's order our crew to sing. Sea shanties are a part of this game. It's a collectible that you can find in the world. So the more you find, the bigger playlist you have for your crew. But for now, we've made it to Mysteriosa. So again, we're gonna seamlessly get off our ship and explore this location. Mysteriosa is a Mayan ruin. Mayan ruins are heavy with uh, stealth and navigation capacities. There's a lot of treasures and uh, hidden discoveries to be found in these locations. If we recall the treasure map, the treasure is hidden behind a temple. So just by quickly looking around, we can see that temple looks about right. So that's our objective, we'll head there. As we go this way, we can see there's a lot of guards on the beach. We could go in and fight them if we wish to, but to show off that this is a mini open world, we're gonna try to find a different route to get to our objective. Here, we've seen a guard. We don't wanna alert him, and we don't wanna alert the guards on the beach, so we're gonna use our stealth ability to take him out silently. 
With AC3, we were able to push the navigation in the frontier, which means using natural environments like trees and rocks and so on. Mayan ruins are the perfect place where we mix man-made structures and these natural environments. So you really get to feel how far the navigation abilities of the assassin have come since the original game. In the distance there, we can see another part of the island being blocked off by a patrol of guards. We're gonna avoid it for now and go for that treasure. It's important for us to be able to give the players new tools, specifically for stealth. In this case, we have the blowpipe. Using the berserk darts, you make your enemies go crazy. Effectively, this means that they'll attack anything and everything in sight, including their own friends, animals, or Edward if he was in the way. So you do have to be careful with how you use it. But now that we've caused a distraction, if we happen to fall down there, at least there's already a bit of damage done for us. But using the, our navigation skills, we're able to get past that area without any trouble. There in the distance, you can see the jackdaw placed exactly where you left it when you got onto this location. It's really important for us to show the beauty of this Caribbean world. The Caribbean has some amazing vistas, and we pushed ourselves to replicate this in the game. As we continue forward, we can see in the distance there, there's a couple prisoners that are taken hostage. This is a scenario that you need to use stealth. If you're detected by those guards, they will kill the hostages. So in this case, it's to your advantage to use the environment to figure out how you can take out those guards without being detected. In this case, it's two guards, so it's not too hard. There are other scenarios where you have more guards and you have to figure out how you can take all of them out at the same time. Now that we've freed these prisoners, they are more than happy to join our crew. This is just one way of gaining crew members. As mentioned earlier, there's the taverns. There's actually many different setups of gaining crew. Here, we're gonna go back to the treasure map. We can see that the treasure is actually behind the temple near a fountain. So if we just look around, we can see that it's uh, around here. Now that we've found the treasure, what we've actually found is a blueprint. Blueprints are incredibly valuable for the upgrading of the Jackdaw. This is how you can upgrade the biggest and most devastating upgrades of the ship. So here we're approaching a reach high point. Just like classic ACs, synchronizing with the reach high point reveals the contents of a location and the map itself. But as an added feature, because this game world is so huge, there are many different locations, this also becomes a fast travel point. So now you can, by synchronizing, now you can come back here anytime you wish to collect those treasures that we passed up a bit earlier. Here we've reached the end of the demo. This was a tease of the open world that we have. We're very excited to be able to show off this game and to let you play it very soon. Thank you for joining us.